In this New World Weapons video, we're going to be taking a look at the Warhammer. Anything you might want to know about the Warhammer, we're going to try and cover in this video. First thing to know about the Warhammer is it's a pure strength scaling weapon, meaning that any points you put into strength are going to directly affect the damage of the weapon, and no other attributes affect its weapon damage. The Warhammer does strike damage, so enemies that are weak to strike damage, particularly like undead enemies, you'll find these near the beginning of the game, the Drowned. Um, in a lot of the dungeons in the game, you'll be facing these. Uh, so it's a very good damage type against undead, so keep that in mind if you're fighting uh, in corruptions or early game or in dungeons, you may want to have a hammer if you're playing a strength build. Also something to know about the hammer is that its light attacks deal 100% damage, its heavy attacks 130%, and its charge heavy attacks a whopping 170% damage. That is a lot. That is actually tied with bow for the highest in the game. Having a look at the skill trees here, you have Juggernaut and Crowd Crusher. Juggernaut focuses more on single target damage, while Crowd Crusher is more on AoEs and crowd control. The Armor Breaker skill of the Juggernaut tree is a attack that does increase damage and it cuts through the target's armor. So if you're fighting a heavily armored target, then this can help boost your damage as it's going to negate some of that protection a target has. Mighty Gavel is an interesting attack. It works kind of like a pseudo execute ability uh, once you've upgraded it, doing more damage to low health targets. But it does substantial damage, but it has a really long animation, meaning that you need to time it well, and the distance on it isn't as far as you'd think, so it's very easy to miss. Wrecking Ball is an interesting ability because it does damage, and it's also a CC, and once upgraded, it can actually CC nearby enemies as well, and it also boosts your armor. So it's a good one to consider. It has a rather long animation as well, so you have to be careful of that. A lot of the hammer animations are actually kind of long, so this is not unique to this ability. A lot of the abilities in the Juggernaut skill tree, the passives increase damage directly or stamina damage. So if you're trying to deal more damage with a hammer, these are not a bad choice. The Capstone ability, Justice for All, only affects the Mighty Gavel ability. So if you're not using the Mighty Gavel ability, then there's no reason to take that Capstone. Moving over to Crowd Crusher, the first ability there is Shockwave. This is an AoE ability that stuns enemies. I really, really like this ability. You can further buff it to make it uh, increase damage. Targets caught in this AoE will also take increased damage for 10 seconds, which is fantastic. If you manage to get in and open with this ability, you sort of soften everything up for further AoEs and stun them. Uh, one of the great things, too, is that if you open with this, enemies are stunned. So when you do like your spin to win, maybe with a Great Axe combo or something, or even the other uh, hammer abilities, they can't interrupt you while you're doing these because sometimes when you're spinning or whatever, you'll get hit and it'll interrupt it. Uh, that can prevent that from happening, so it's a great ability. Works really good in PvE and PvP. The next ability here is Clear Out. I really, really like this ability. It doesn't do much damage, but it knocks enemies flying. Um, this is, in my opinion, one of the better abilities to use after you've sort of burned your other abilities. So if you have like three hammer abilities, try and use this one last because it spreads out enemies, and if they're all grouped up, that's ideally where you want to keep them. So, but it's really good because it knocks enemies flying, then they got to get up off the ground, and it can, you know, get a lot of enemies off you if, like, if you're fighting PvE or PvP and you're, you're getting beat up pretty hard. If you knock them flying, you can give yourself some breathing room. Path of Destiny is an interesting ability because it's actually a hammer attack that does a small AoE kind of periodically over a long distance in a line. Um, what I really like about it is it adds some range to the hammer, allowing you to maybe stagger at targets from a range you know if you're like kind of standoffing when pvp and you can't quite charge in yet allows you to kind of chip away at enemies and stagger and interrupt them or also maybe there's an enemy's running from you and allows you to slow them up or maybe finish them off if they're really low on health and it's just a nice way to get some range as a hammer user a couple really good abilities in this tree are the prevailing spirit ability which allows you to heal yourself if you are attacking a target that is affected by a crowd control or a crowd crusher ability uh, this is really good because most targets, you know, you're going to hit them with an ability and then another ability and then another ability. Or maybe you hit them with ability, then like a lighter heavy attack, then another ability, etc. This is going to allow you to keep healing yourself a bit. Another one is acceleration. This helps reduce the cooldown of these abilities when you hit targets that are debuffed by them with a light attack. Generally, that's what you're doing once you burn all your abilities. So this helps them replenish more quickly, allowing them to use them more often. Aftershock is nice for a PvP. This allows you to slow targets that are hit with one of these abilities. CC is a huge part of PvP in this game. It's not really super important for PvE, so if you're playing in PvE, you probably want to shoot for the other capstone and perhaps use that other ability. But in PvP, any CC you can get is good. What I really love about the hammer weapon is the crowd control that it has. It has more crowd control than just about any other weapon out there. Uh, the downside is you have to be very, very close to pull it off, and sometimes that is hard to do, uh, particularly in PvP. Other weapons that go really well with the hammer are the Great Axe and the Hatchet. Both of them are strength scaling. Uh, the Great Axe basically kind of allows you to set up with the hammer or to charge in with the charge ability of the Great Axe. 
then lay down some uh, CCs and stuns with a hammer, and then AoE with a great axe abilities uh, while enemies are CC'd and can't interrupt you, which is good. That works very well in PvE and PvP. And in PvP, you can charge in, spin to win, then CC, and then attack a couple of it and spin to win again, and that works really well. Hatchet allows you to buff your damage with a Berserk ability, so you can increase your damage with both your hammer and your hatchet. Um, it also can buff your run speed, making you be able to catch enemies faster. One of the problems with Hammer is they don't have a gap closing ability. So unless you're right on top of the enemies and they're not going anywhere, it's hard to use in PvP uh, unless you have something else that has a gap closer. Um, Hatchet doesn't have a gap closer, but it allows you to move faster when you use Berserk, which is helpful. So it's maybe not as good as the Great Axe, but it's still pretty strong. Uh, and additionally, they have an ability that allows them to prevent death every 75 seconds for about three seconds. Um, this is really good at keeping you alive when you're about to die, in, either in PvE or PvP, giving you that little bit of extra time to try and finish off the enemy or maybe CC him and then finish him off. So that is also not a bad pairing. As I mentioned, the major downside of the hammer is it's rather short range generally, and the fact that there's no way to catch other enemies uh, or, you know, in PvP. In PvE, that's not a problem. Enemies charge at you, the AoEs work really well, but in PvP, it has a, a downside of not really being able to catch enemies very well. And again, much like the Great Axe, you're probably going to want to wear heavier medium armor when you go into combat with this because you're going to be up close and personal in enemies' faces taking a lot of damage. And if you don't stay alive, then you're not going to be able to get your abilities off. Um, a lot of abilities in the uh, Hammer line will buff your armor or your defense, which is great to help keep you alive, so make sure to use those when you can. Um, but otherwise, you, you, know, you want to stay alive when you're up close in enemies' face or player's face, uh, and medium and heavy armor are about the best way to do that. As far as stats on these weapons, you mainly want to look for strength uh, or critical chance or things that uh, apply uh, damage on crits. Remember that hitting enemies in the back are automatically critical hits, so you definitely want to aim for that when possible. In terms of like what abilities you want to look for on these weapons, strength and critical chance are probably the best. You can look for ones that affect abilities directly that you use, but those are probably the best two to get. Stay tuned for more weapon guides as we cover all 11 weapons in New World. Uh, and make sure to check out the New World Wiki if you have other questions about the game. What weapons are you guys going to be using at launch? What builds are you going to be making? Let me know in the comments below.